Good morning. Or whatever it is, wherever you are. Could have to be better. I could have done a little bit more sleep last night. All right, so I've actually lost track of what this line was. That might be the general goal. I know we were looking at seeing if it was, if it was reasonable to <clears throat> take all these like little sub commands to just add a log to this tile and treat it that way. Uh, I had but to do that. I kind of want to be looking at okay, where do we write? So we've got uh, actually most of this is happening through like get floor. Uh, so that's a read back operation. Those actually wouldn't get batched up. Uh, this happens here, or uh, that's a placement. It's setting a floor, setting an object. That's a floor setting a placement. That's set placement, set object. And then set floor is a separate thing. Add placement, set floor, add placement, set floor. And I guess the question I had is if we just try to say, okay, this tile record this log. Uh, do we have all the information we need for that? Uh, we'd still have to switch off uh, the arc starts because those kind of deal with like higher level information. And then if it's a placement, pick up our start. We need to break, updating our end time. Then we're doing coordinates. And this is essentially file interface from here. Get floor, add plus plus set floor, get object, get floor, remove floor. I have, uh, have to pass down object size information. That's not part of the straight. Well, we are, we're also changing log. Uh, and this is some stuff I don't need to revisit because we might, for placements, we always need to overwrite. Well, if it's unknown, we need to overwrite. Not definitely known. Then you've got the adjacency, which I guess these could turn tile fetch instead of coordinate. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, because this is between tiles, so it doesn't work really work as a tile operation. Uh, once we get to a coordinate, this stuff might be able to go within tile, but...
This decision actually gets made by Well, luckily you. <laughs> Object over. That I. Oh, is that how big over we need to be based on the size of the object? Which edge, which tile edge we are? Uh, 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 uh. <clears throat> yeah, so that's in between tiles. So I think object size is the awkward thing that we're doing. Well, and floor removals. That's kind of meta information as well. Those are the things that make it awkward to try and put put a tile here in the tile itself. And I was looking at putting stuff in the tile itself because we might want to say we want to try and get a tile and then if it's not loaded we need to load it. Tiles won't be exclusively made by this. They might be loaded wholesale from someplace else. And then this, uh, yeah, and this resolves on the, oh, this depends on the previous log item, which is another thing that wouldn't be readily available to uh, just write it to the, to the tile of thing. So if I did that in the tile, I'd have to like double do log dot floor once to say we're just going to write it, and the one other one to say okay we're going to set floor and set object. Now I could perchance uh, remove this direct interface here <clears throat> and actually like fetch the tile we're aiming at. Uh, this was sort of a transitional thing to get us past the point where all of this stuff was internal to this object. It would have been nice to loop through the line saying, okay, here's the coordinate. 
I'll deal with it. But there's a lot of details and context we need. Object size. If size is unknown, wait. As if not size or size less than min size. Oh, if the size was known, run account is excluded. If the size is not known, well, this was to fix the unknown object problem. Uh, or rather, the not size was. We only count it as size less than mid size. Right, I cannot. Do size less than min size if it's not defined. But this is a less than check. This is a skip, so I think this needs to be size and. At which point this is assumed. Oh, I guess what? Yeah, if size is unknown, we just want to skip this. We need to treat it as a very, very large object. Makes the logs larger, larger but at least it's correct ish. Now, see, this is if occupant.
Yeah. I need to come back to this problem. That needs to be if definitely, if size is definitely known to be small. Uh, we might need to change it to a zero. I don't know what we'd ever skip. I never think that logic. <clears throat> anyway, so this is dependent on object size. <clears throat> object size is sort of ambient. Real tempting to make some of this essentially global. <clears throat> it's not actually varying. <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be an argument. <clears throat> And it becomes easier to extract that method. So object size is an issue. Floor removal is an issue. Well, min size is an argument too. Depends on the scale. Get over. Do we ever use other bounds for that? Uh, okay, that's a fallback. Objects dot object over. objects uh Base is prior, prior is log file. Wait, that's, that's initialized. What have I done here?
Oh, okay. So this is something with object data. Okay. The object over here is not 2224. This is the number of tiles over in each dimension for that object ID. And that was just a, a dummy fill in if it wasn't there. Log that ID. Oh, um, I may also be seeing uh, no, these are only going to cover one. This is just going to be a plus one minus one for t whether it covers a different tile. Can't go more than one tile at the size that we're working with. <laughs> so object over depends on object size. I guess object data is actually providing that. Objects, object size. And then you go to output final placements. which goes down to tiled with individual bits. That could potentially depend on the data at a particular time. Although we call this per log file, so you could potentially handle that out of. Uh, well, I'm talking about essentially setting up global data. Yeah, so moving that into tile is an interesting idea. It's just, there's so much context involved in the decisions.
Hmm. And now I'm wondering if remove floor is the right option here. Or if I should actually write out. Well, there's no naturally occurring floor. That's the static state of it. Thinking how much data we'd have to pass around to move this into tile. You have to know the previous record to see <clears throat> because it's not properly recorded. The floor removals aren't properly recorded. We kind of have to infer them from two consecutive records, which I, I think even that has problems. Uh, we want to filter things by size. Yeah, we can break it or floor removal. I could, I could sort of turn this all into one, one call. And like, well, his occupant is used down here. I could have one level that picks the tile to send it to, which would still have to get into adjacent tiles. And then within a, and then within the tile, we have to have all the context information. Then, we, then that would need to know about floor removals and object sizes. Uh, we have the whole previous occupant problem for any given bot, which goes into the multi-tile thing. 
That thing has a size. Uh, and I can just pass around all my removals and object size stuff. Just someone's going to be duplicating that the references to that like all over the place. Uh, and I still have to have a way to get a previous occupant out this. So we calculate our coordinates. Things that are actually marked as floors are easy. That would be everything was that easy. Context for floor removal. Uh, and one. So if we prefer it tile, we also have to give the tile the previous line. Yeah, those special cases. Not the previous line in that tile. The previous line. Then you need the object size and Yeah, I don't, don't consider it practical right now. Uh, maybe that would have helped with some other stuff, but I just don't see a way to do it without passing a ton of parameters into each and every tile.
then every write would need to have the previous line and maybe there's a way to do that and I'm just not seeing it. Uh, I've lost track of what that is. Uh, uh, uh. All right, so the indexes. Uh, oh, you know what? I was writing indexes. And I think I blew away. Yeah, I blew away some of the things I had made. You better compact that. Yeah, I started doing some other restructuring and then decided I wanted to go back and extract that tile object. Which actually, do I still need to work on that? Right now, We've got our base. And this is going here and using tiled set operation to reload that. So this is actually we're getting cords once. So really, this could fetch the tile based on this, and then we have to do a little bit less indexing. Uh, so these could put, let's see, could these move? This is right tiles. Oh, you're still based on objects floors. Which is the list of everything. Okay, so I do still have some in, some, so actually I probably want to rewrite this to tile read and tile write. And that might move it out of being a tiled helper object. That would be using that directly from somewhere else. Oh, uh, mostly be the same places, but uh, then we would have the list of tiles. The total that total list of coordinates would be instead of combining our floors and objects, it would just be the set of tiles, and then the arguments. These chain, not floor objects and floors. We actually have the concept of tiled dot tiles.
because that was sort of an intermediary layer. Uh, doesn't actually need to be a set anymore. Uh, presumably, six have that. Uh, no, it's a, it's a dict. Uh, now, one thing we do have to watch out for oh, well. I think tile floors and tile objects are accessible. Uh, conceivably, we could have a tile empty. Uh, I could also, I was debating if I, um, have that be like a method of tile. Of course, I was actually thinking that this entire thing should be somehow well, I have to deal with path information. Okay, so that's one level of transformation. Read tiles. Uh, there is. Okay, so that is the coordinate list. Mm. So I'm already using chords plural. List tiles, that's the most dead code at this point. Index. All right, so the problem with having the tile, well, if I want to lazy load it, it has to have all of its path information. Uh, whatever you like. Okay, so that is tile dot new. You don't have any kind of file information. So you would need like tile factory essentially. A tile set. Well, this all depends on time. 
This gets back to we need to have timestamps. Right now at a top level we say okay just load up everything right now. I want to say that was a single base time. This is we load up our index from the previous from the base time. That gives us the timestamps of tiles if we need to load them. Hmm. All right. Take a short break. I'll be back in a few minutes. Yeah. Will I be able to see when I have hair now? He's close. Okay. Oh, wow. I mean, I guess, yeah. I think, yeah. I'm not worried about it. I've done my research on you. You guys don't like ice. Really hurts to get hit by it. Yeah! Woo! Even through all that, Mom. Even through all that, I won the round. Cause my team is cool. You are the Apex champions. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Man, that was that was mean. Hey, no, stop. Stop hit. Stop. No. Okay, I need you guys to see what she's been putting me through. If I, like, aim the camera down at all that, at all of that. She's been, she's been coming into the room, hitting me, throwing things at me, and h hitting me with a whole bunch of things, and bringing me so much food. <sighs> anyway, let's go to Costco. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and suck my nuts. Is a thing that allows you to convert polluted water into regular water. Uh, so this big pool of pee water, basically, is what we use for the main water of our base when necessary. We do have three coal generators here as backups. We're only down to nine tons of coal. I actually didn't have a natural gas geyser that I could find on this map. I explored the whole map like crazy, desperately looking for a natural gas geyser. Never found, not even... All right, well, welcome back. <clears throat> so you create tile or can create tiles on demand. This is like the only thing we do right now. Well, that's a container which creates them on demand. And right now we go through a bunch of set floor set objects the kind of rebuild that thing. Uh, we could actually dig down into tiles to streamline that a little bit. Uh, if I get index loading to load the appropriate timestamps, we might end up loading tiles that don't matter if we just load everything. Uh, that would save us from having to put file system information in read and write. I could pass the path in, the output path der zoom. Well, the tiles need to know their timestamp.
we would get a tile. Coordinates would be semi implied. <clears throat> uh, writing tiles, uh, the X and Y are implied. We've got them anyway. Uh, it would need a file system and a path. Or do we just do we give it the file handle and say it's just the tile itself is just doing the internals? I mean, I think tiles know their chords. They'll know if they're empty. But you'd have to path in the file system if you wanted to defer this call. <clears throat> and we wouldn't be constructing a complete path. We'd have, we'd have to construct like output path dir zoom and then the tile would add the tile x tile y. Yeah, because you have your own chords. You could use just get tile x tile. And then we've got map log. And it, it was kind of nice that this, this was doing all of our format stuff. <clears throat> uh, so you could potentially have multiple versions of these that write in different formats, whereas right now, or if I move that into tile, then there's only one way to read and write. Uh, all right, so we move this ticking tiles. If we move this to being tile aware, so this loads our tiled. Yeah, we make a brand new tiled, which we don't need most of it. I don't think. <clears throat> Pass that entire thing. And that's our base. And that uses copy key. Oh, well, these are. Oh. Or is this then in tile? That's then in tile. Oh, I selected the copy key.
There's a base there. I'm not sure we're properly handling that. You're making that whole cloth. Yeah, zero, zero, zero. Oh, there's, there's S end. Okay. Uh, is that actually one of the... Uh, SN starts at start and then gets advanced, so no, it is not. <laughs> well, given words, we can say tile equals I can skip a little bit. Uh, so you get read tiles gives you a dir. Base span candidates dot last. So that's I just need to carry that information around. In addition to the tile set itself, and you don't currently have time, although you might need. Uh, and if I ever want a lazy load. I kind of need to file system. All right, Two broken stuff. Yeah, we broke stuff. What final placement? One forty four. No tiles. Right index.
Oh, uh, okay, so that was write, write, not write, read. Uh, what do we do with you? This is set again, yeah. That should be an array. And oh. <laughs> this needs to be sorted. And that's actually something else I need to work on. Switching that sort around. Object. Zero expected objects. I don't know about, I'm doing 24. I think I should probably be excluding something. Let's just... Did I do something to restrict the set of zooms I do? Right, no, because I'm only doing the top level. I'm only doing tiled, not map logs. That does have to write everything. All right. So we did some renaming. We move that to be tile objects. Out still has in little methods that it's using internally. Uh, Hi all. Uh, 
Uh, so the question is, can we get a tile up front on this? We get tile X, we get tile Y. We have all of these references to tile X, tile Y. Uh, we already have tile the thing. Uh, that is actually a set of coordinates. I might not need that things. These have been the bridge methods. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Tile dot floors, tile dot floors, tile dot objects, different objects. Uh, now, placements is a little bit potentially hairy. I'm not even doing a lot of map log stuff. Output map log. Tile dot placements. Is a coordinate tile map. Our tile is actually a list of placements here. What's well, that really? Uh... I was wondering if I could get a tile reference and sort of get rid of the subtraction layer. So we would get our and one place this might get a little bit awkward is and go down to do all our overs. We just get new tile there. Uh, you know what? I'm a little bit less sure about that. Uh, all right, so we have our XY. Uh, tile. Uh, so actually, you were just ended up being four, didn't you?
Alors... All right, so that's the regular set. Uh, so this is at a cohort. Map a key. Okay, so the dot actually doesn't work so well. Thing with your timestamps. All right, remove floor. And I did my get operations in my running window. Our? Oh, out dot tiles. It's the static method. Given two expected. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna be sort of a double index, isn't it? A double bracket. You're indexing it by a pair. Well, technically it's an array. We're treating it as a tuple. Okay, so that seems to be in some kind of order. Uh, can we then lose this interface? Okay. That cleans that up a little bit. Uh, where do I keep track of time? I need to write time, I need to read time. I think I had an intermediate format. Where I did timestamp, and here's all the tiles in that time. That back. The top coordinates. I then need to actually load the Tiles associated with that. 
I got it set up to write it. And I wasn't re load. Uh, because right now it's just a tile list, so that would have to be a tile list. That's right, I loaded it as triples. Ignored part of it. Uh, yeah, so that's going to mess with that a little bit. And when we write, well, we only want to write the updated tiles because all the old ones will still be there. So right now, uh, I think I've got an updated flag. Uh, yeah, we're only really caring about the static state placements, I think are going to be I might have to, might be doing placements. All right, so set object, set floor, tracks the updated status. So final placements isn't just Tiles, right tiles, right index. Uh, and it's select in Ruby. Well, this is probably worth having as a help note. And I just had that as a flag, not as a query method right now. Uh, this, I guess is a little bit more compact. Uh, now you see the index might not be updated tiles. That needs to keep track of all the old stuff too, but there, the tiles have to have a timestamp. Hmm? Huh? Right, so this has to be, uh, shoot, you were, you were, uh, excuse me, sir, go away. You are a hash. So I think that this is workable, uh, but we have to do have to do full form. Okay. Yeah. So this second bit is smaller. We 
not doing anything to track the time step of the tiles loaded. Okay, that was pretty small. Uh, 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 uh. I can read and write timestamps there. Start with just statically the current thing. Uh, but if I load, I eventually need tiles. Right, and this re relies on the lazy creation of the tile from our container. It's normally want to create well, anything that's updated is going to end up being up upgraded to current. When we load, we would have to have like an extra field to save the loaded timestamp. Well, oh, that's actually one. That's actually one of the one part of the path. Uh, and then when we write, we're only doing updated files, which kind of explicitly says we're going to write at this time. And at the index, we're going to be checking the updated flag, updated timestamp. All right, well, bootstrapping. Uh, we need to write an index. Is this error? Get the file format down, we can and that will be functionally equivalent. We're really gonna have to do to somehow group that by files. And the other thing we wanted to do with this, uh, 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 how do we do that before? I was grouping it by Y coordinate. That's more consistency. Uh, that is sorting by x, y. Uh, can I do uh oh uh no, if we just do sort, 
and it's AB, and I forget the order when these needs need to be in. Uh, And that gives us a number, or a plus one, minus one. And I think times two is enough. All right, we're not gonna be able to read that back. A read? No, this is a right. Oh, you're, you're, you're not a full tile. You're a, you're just a pair. Well, it didn't blow up somehow. All right, so that got us a timestamp. Uh, we need a character turn there. And then we are going in strict Y order. I don't really care about which direction it flows in at this time. I suppose if I'm going to sort it that way anyway, Drawing order would be nice, in which case... You need to go that way. And X can go negative to positive. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so tile X, tile Y. Wait, is, that, is that tile X, tile Y? Yeah, there's, there's still tile coordinates. Okay, so if... Last Y. Uh, no. Uh, she we had to do this this way, which actually sort of solves this problem. Uh, or. Mm, mm, no, you actually stand alone. And then we always do the X. Uh, oh, I X. And that, at some point, Am I actually reading the index right now? <laughs> All right, so that makes the index a little bit more compact. Uh, now how about reading that? Read index. Well, yeah, it probably, probably isn't reading much of anything. Not a few. <laughs> That's almost disconcerting. All 
All right, so each line, uh, if line zero equals T, then, well, we don't really have a, anything with this yet. Uh, so that would be like one to negative one. Uh, else we want to split on space. Tile y equals line dot shift. No parts. And then parts dot each. Well, the string of tile X. Mm, okay, so I guess what we just, we just do is solves that problem. Uh, we can actually boot that for a little bit. Unused variable timestamp, expected that. We got a somewhat reasonable, reasonable looking list. Now, if you get timestamps, uh, what do we do with index? The tile list goes to read tiles, which only gets two parts. <laughs> uh, that actually ought to still work. In fact, it does seem to still work. Uh, if we're reading tiles from a tile list, uh, I guess this still has its final times. Uh, read tiles, uh, that's chords. Oh yeah, that, uh, that, that blank is gonna, gonna go over real good. Yep, that's a nil. Okay, well, first of all, you can really initialize this as there, although that might be a string. Uh, so why are we not picking up timestamp? Oh, it wasn't defined at this scale, so it ended up being a, yeah, a, a local method. Wrong language. Okay, right, so those seem reasonable. Uh, that is read tiles. Now, 
Now, when we write back the index to our second page, uh, we would actually expect to have two timestamps. Uh, we have no way to record this right now. I guess the Let me just checkpoint this before I, for, I end up resetting it again. All right, now, where, where, where do we store, I guess it has to be tiled, right? have to have some facility have to be a, a I guess this is, this is sort of meta information it's gonna have to be updatable for when we're loading because it because our initializer is going to be in the hash, so it can't as a matter of course. Well, that's only for unknown entry. If we're doing a straight up load, well, no, we're grabbing the tile and we're adding entries to it. But if we're reading tiles, what the heck are we doing? Oh, we're saying tile equals this tile and then add stuff to it, which. Does tiled have a timestamp? It has some kind of timestamps. Oh, the timestamp for these tiles are going to be your S end, which we don't know. Until we are done. Which is why that might have to be uh, the up the writing the tiles might have to be updated status aware, but that's not just a tile list. That is the object as the actual timestamp. We're writing it to a dirt. So the updated ones go there. So if we do a brand new tile and timestamp is a required or time is a required thing, uh, we can only give it incorrect values. <laughs> We should never write out the tile unless we did a write to it. Uh, do I need, do we need to update this? If my loader and initialize it, And just to give us, I guess this would be, I mean, it would ought to be SN. That's going to be kind of a moving target as we press here. Uh, 
And then when we load, we don't actually rely on that. And we need a timestamp. Oh, this is tile equal. We actually have to say tile equals um, tile dot tiles chords equal. This is where we might want to extract a tile. But that gives us the possibility for a tile to have a timestamp. So when we write our in, well, we'll check that. See, it smoked. Uh, even when expected to tile placement log. Okay, so that is the 17, going back to 234, ah. Now, if we're copying from you, here, do that, copy key. What time would you use? I guess you would be initialized to the same S base, previous S end. Those tiles, yeah, yeah, for copying. We want to maintain those timestamps. Oh, this, this reset's updated. And any updated should have their, their, well, if we end up using it, we want to maintain timestamps. Given one expected to. Oh, new. Okay, so actually this is taken care of. Oh, um, last dot new. Okay, so yeah, yeah, that's already taken care of. And then when we write this out, I think the input form, the input reader will be okay. This gets a, a fair bit more complicated. Uh, so now this is, uh, this Pointed was positive to negative. I guess this would be negative to positive. Something that is a. I'm basically starting using exactly the opposite order of. Uh, its placement there. All right, so uh, I guess this does kind of need to be outside of there. Um, empty, we don't care. 
Uh, that's the cords. Wait, where's the tile? Oh, this because this is this is just cords. So cords actually includes the timestamp. Uh, oh, tiles cords. If that's a triple, it's not going to go so well. These are cords. I can just do tile x, tile y, time. Uh, with the unfortunate consequence that we have to do this. Wait, right? Is right index tiles? No, it has to be time. Tiles. Oh, tiles keys aren't going to have time. Uh, that's tiles keys. Uh. You can't sort a hash. So I have to go values. I have to sort by... Uh, this was... I think we don't have really accessible right now. Uh, let's see, I can make an accessor that does this pretty simply. I could also split it up front. Uh, that sort is the only place going to be a real problem, I think. I mean, I guess I can do chord zero. Uh, not tile Y. Uh, not tile Y. This is getting quite a bit larger than it was. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know if I'm super thrilled by that formatting. And now this is going to be a tile. For which we can ask if it's empty. Uh, that's why tile, tile. I guess I could also just map the tiles into triples. That's all we care about. That's kind of what the index is. Uh, well, oh, no, right index has to be updated aware ultimately. Okay, skip if it's empty. If tile dot time not equal to last time.
Uh, oh, you know what? When I do this, we have to reset this just in case. Uh, I could just always have a blank line. Uh, the reader. I mean, that will turn, that will make that nil and this empty. So it would be kind of okay with that. Getting rid of it would mean asking if we had ever output a line. Or rather, if, if, if it's the first one. I guess would be last t equals nil. Or rather, last t not equal to nil. Uh, uh, but the only when it's not equal. It changes, and it was something we've already done output. We need to do a line break. Okay. And what I'm missing here is updated. Uh, Oh, this affects my. I I do need to turn them into triples. Either I need to go through and modify the, the tile itself if updated to be the appropriate timestamp. Or I have to have a process that produces the triples. that includes all of that stuff and then sort them and sort and process those. Now, properly speaking, an index should just be kind of working with that level of information, which kind of leads me in that direction, although named values are sort of nice. Uh, I guess we could, yeah, we could ask 
for the list of like tile cords or something. Out of you, so you would go through return either tile time or tiled end time. Uh, see, tiles is a hash right now. This can go straight values. And that's where it stops being easy. Uh, we could, we could be lazy here. And this is going to be our S end, or it's going to be tile dot time. And I have messed something up here. That's a sub expression. Mm. All right, so now we're back to this, which is slightly unfortunate. LX, tile Y, time. Uh, no, if we're splitting on arrays, that's just that. Oh, no, we can't ask if it's empty. I don't even have the tiles here. Uh, well, I guess the index shouldn't even care about that either, huh? Values. Uh, I guess this would actually be a reject. Okay. Get that out of the way up front. Okay, so time is time. Cool. Uh Values for array. Ah, yes, this is no longer a hash. Sort of okay there. No. All right, so we have two time steps. 
uh, name tile. Those appear to be disjoint. Ninety three, ninety four. No, wait. These are duplicate. So, how did that happen? So, we loaded it and then didn't use it when we were updating data. Not yet, there's negative two, negative three, negative four. Of course, I've got this, I've also got a lot of junk sitting around here, so I probably need to clear Entire thing. We've been we've been running a lot of different versions of this. All right. Uh, so base case. There's all the stuff. I should have reloaded that. Yeah. Now, we don't have, this must have been new placements here, but this is a smaller set. So it's not like I reloaded all of this stuff. We had new placements here, uh, but it should not have put these down then. Well, that's going to be a pain in the butt. Uh, those are X's. Wait. Right, 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 right. Zero, one, zero, one. The Y's. Wait, I'm doing this right? I thought this was, yeah, X. It's got zero and one. Oh, maybe I'm looking at this wrong. Well, I mean, those are the same coordinate. If it was updated here, it, it then shouldn't appear in this list. Okay. Uh, let's read index, read tiles. Am I using chords direct? I am using chords directly. I, um, I was lazy about that. That looks a little bit smaller.
There was none. We updated a bunch of things there. Actually, mm, yeah, there's zero, but it, it didn't involve any of this stuff because these all got touched again. Then on this end. And then I could possibly difference encode these as well. These are almost always going to be plus one, plus one, plus one. But there's going to be many, many cases of plus one, plus one, plus one. Uh, it just, you know, I don't want to get everything working before we do, do, do crazy encoding. Do I use the? Yeah, I think I do in the island deck. All right, so that actually, actually, I think this is actually saved. Hi, all reading. Especially in the repo. Uh, we don't really have a good example for this yet because these are very tight times right now. Uh, we could use arbitrarily small times for proof of concept. But after two weeks or so, we pretty much just kind of ignore that from loading the previous. It seems like that might be easier to handle here. Uh, read index. Yeah, so this is, hmm. So I could, if I, if given the timestamp, I could ignore Okay, so at this point we've read the line. This determines if we need to update our timestamp. Uh, our timestamps are in seconds. Uh, okay, so this is a older timestamp minus. Uh, we're going to say 14 days times 20, 14 days times 24 hours a day times 60 minutes per hour times 60 seconds per per minute. And we're going to say... Uh, next, if our current processing timestamp is less than cut off, uh, and we want to be loaded tile list. Uh, 
Now, we loaded a bunch of stuff. I don't know exactly how far apart these time these two timestamps are. Well, I mean, I, I could do math. Uh, they're pretty close. Uh, Mmm, that loaded too much. Uh, is this possibly a string int thing? Okay, uh, 6174271. Why are you reloading anything? Is me or does this look like fewer iterations? Right, because they're all the individual lines. Um, Timestamp 42. Uh oh, no, this is the, yeah, this is actually not the right place to make this decision because we don't have our current timestamp here. I could, I could pass a cutoff time to it. Base band, yeah, 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 yeah. There's the tile list. Uh, read tiles. Does read tiles even need to dir anymore? It's giving us the timestamp of this thing. It's gonna be like our previous time set. Sort of view, copy, establish our base time. Uh, 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 uh. Base, base tiled, log file, base file, and it's dot last. Um, that's art. Child. So this is the base tile for the log file. Log file has a timestamp. Uh, so do we read index and pass that a cutoff? Or do we read tiles and pass that a cutoff? All right, so we really want, well, let's get, get it to work first. Uh, 
uh, if less than, I guess we would just say zero if, we should probably know about that. Uh, next, if timestamp less than cutoff, we still have print tile list. Okay, we loaded nothing. And for a real value, does load everything. Uh, all right, are we back to reasonable output? I would like it to be lazy. Uh, getting all of the file system information into the loop could be a bit dodgy. Okay, so we're already doing that. Uh, don't, don't load. At some point we have to expire things because the real server is going to reset if things haven't been seen for a while and we just can't grow forever. It will get kind of unwieldy. Uh, admittedly, I could, with the indexes, not full copy of all the old stuff every time we write it out. Not as bad. Uh, so I might be able to make that a little bit more generous, but about what it's going to be a real game. And time of reading should be lazy. Can I get back to some? I'll be track. That's not how you can just pass in the. That is where, well, we're processing tiles. Go to create a tile. Have all of the information it might need. Go load pre content dot type. Um, I might not need to wait until it got updated, like if we reference it. Oh, that's also a problem. I'm assuming that I loaded everything and I have that list back to write out the new index. Okay, this, this is my note about what we were before. Uh, other thing we need is uh, to be lazy, which means we need to keep the total index 
somewhere since it won't be just the tile list. Uh, and that means that if we do go for a coordinate, we have to be able to keep have that total index around to see what timestamp we would fetch. Maybe, no, maybe what I do is I initialize that array with blank tiles. You know, mostly. And then if they have timestamp and file information, then they have to go load. Won't get the nice progress bar on the load step because you never know when you need to load one. So we'll have to create an object for it. But we won't load the contents. So like in this case, it's going to be less than 38 that we're actually the same. And when we're operating on S3, that's going to be kind of important to not refetch everything, especially with a two-week trail. All right, that could be messy enough that I don't want to deal with it right now. Uh, should probably get on to Step Mania. Uh, so that was just a note. Uh, if you're programming, uh, I'm going to stop programming. Uh, stream is it? Well, programming is over. I will be back to play Step Mania for a little bit. If you just want to hang out and listen to music while I bounce around the dance pad, I am going to break stream a little bit just to change up all of my stream settings and also break the VOD. Uh, I'm normally going to be on around these times, and we're going to we're kind of getting to the point where that last little bit's gonna be that mania for a bit, but I will actually be back if anybody wants to want to hang out. See you in a bit. <laughs>